What is going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Banger Two Times for me, and today we back another video, man. Today I'm doing a reaction to Tabo Bester. You know what I'm saying? A lot of y'all was telling me in the comments I should do a reaction to Tabo Bester and his story. Apparently, it gets wicked, it gets crazy, it gets scary. You know what I'm saying? And hey, man, I know this is based on reality, so I'm not here to laugh or nothing like that because it does get spooky. I heard. So let's get straight to it. Make sure you like, you comment, you share, and you subscribe if you're new to the channel, y'all. Let's get straight to it. Ooh, 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 man. The utterly bizarre case, too, and made matters worse. Damn. Utterly bizarre. I never heard some terms like that. In the early hours of May 3rd, 2022, prison officials at the Mangong Prison in South Africa were notified of a suspicious fire which broke out in cell 35. This was a solitary cell meant for extreme cases only and was often left unoccupied due to the odd positioning of the cell, which was basically hidden from view due to a blind spot in the CCTV network. Huh? On this day, however, as fate would have it, the cell was occupied by a notorious prisoner, Tarbo Bester, who was more commonly known as the Facebook Rapist. He was serving a life sentence for a string of heinous crimes, including murder, rape, and armed robbery. When prison officials eventually reacted to the fire that broke out, Dude, they recovered the remains of an un- This person is dangerous, like, this person is dangerous, bro. This is a danger to society right now, like, he, holy smokes, holy smokes, y'all. When prison officials eventually reacted to the fire that broke out, they recovered the remains of an unknown person believed to be Bester. He was laying under the mattress of his bed, and he was burnt beyond recognition. His death was originally ruled a suicide, and to be honest, many people rejoiced because they believed that justice had finally been served, as Bester wouldn't be able to hurt another person again. The supposed end of Tarbo Bester's reign of terror brought a fleeting sense of peace to those who'd been affected by his actions. I can't hold this sin. I gotta be hundred percent real, bro. Does he look human to y'all? Like, like I'm being real. Does he look human? He don't look human to me, man. Like, just in these pictures and these, he don't look like a real person. I don't know what it is, bro. Like, like even this photo right here, he don't look human to me, man. I mean, when you do such crimes at the end of the day, you ain't human at the end of the day. That's not humanity doing such crimes, but. However, just ten months later, a user on social media uncovered something so shocking and disturbing that it shattered any remnants of solace. As she mindlessly scrolled through social media, a user stumbled upon a seemingly ordinary photo. It depicted South African influencer and celebrity doctor Nandipa Magudumana shopping at the Santon complex. Oh, the photo my was taken goodness. by an admiring fan who couldn't resist capturing their favorite influencer in the moment. Influencer At first involved. it seemed like nothing out of the ordinary, but as the user gazed deeper into the image, a realization struck them. The man shopping alongside the doctor bore an uncanny resemblance to the notorious Tarbo Bester. Despite a change in hairstyle and the use of sunglasses, a childhood friend of Bester's would later say that he was convinced that the man in the photo was indeed that of the Facebook rapist. The photo spread across social media platforms at lightning speed, igniting a firestorm of opinions and debates. Some argued that the man in the photo was undoubtedly Tarbo Bester, while others vehemently disagreed. And while opinions were certainly divided, one thing that everyone could agree on was that it was impossible for it to actually be him, as Tarbo died in the prison fire. Mm -mm, that is him. Like, you can just see, it, like, his features, he has unique, distinct features, you know what I'm saying? He's not a dude where you can, like, like you can go to the hood or something like that, you can go to an all-black neighborhood or something like that, and you can spot him out easily. Like, he, he got distinct features, like, you know what I'm saying? Just the way he looks... I don't know, man. He, he, in May it's spooky, bro. This is spooky. I'm not going to lie. Spooking me out. Ooh, child. But as the debate raged on, cracks in the official story began to surface, and suddenly, nothing was certain anymore. The prison mugshot of Tarbo Bester showed him towering at 5.6 feet, yet a leaked autopsy report claimed that the body recovered was that of an adult male standing at a mere 4.6 feet. The report also stated that the cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head, with no signs of smoke inhalation, leading to the conclusion that the person was already dead before the fire even started. The story was becoming more and more like a Hollywood thriller, where truth was stranger than fiction. The inconsistencies were eventually too great to ignore, and the public was left with more questions than answers. Had Bester really perished in the fire, or had he managed to escape? 
How had he broken out of one of South Africa's most secure prisons? And the most haunting question of all, who was the person found burnt beyond recognition in the cell? The public's demand for answers grew stronger, and it wasn't long before prison officials were forced to respond. The Department of Correctional Services has concluded that the body found in a Mangaung cell is not that of so-called Facebook rapist Thabo Besta. It says Besta escaped from custody in May last year. The department says there will be serious consequences for those found to have been involved oh, in the system. Oh, oh. Yeah. We, can, we found Besta. When did you find him? We found him. We sent to prison for life. No, but now he's escaped. We, we find Besta. We find Besta. Yeah. Prison for, for life and 75, yeah. year, 75 years. Yeah, where is he now? Bester was uh, jumped out of correctional <laughs> service yeah. and were chasing Bester for the second time yeah. as, as the police. But we, we will find Bester. Yeah. We were, were getting good clues. Yo, Tarbo Bester was born into a world of darkness, his existence marked by tragedy and crime. Born on June 13th, somewhere between 1983 and 1986, his mother was only 16 when she was brutally raped by a local storekeeper who offered her a ride home after visiting her sister. He was subsequently raised by his grandparents, and from a very young age, he seemed to be destined for a life of crime. When he was only four years old, his grandfather found him in possession of a large wand of cash, and after confronting Tarbo, he told him that a neighbor had given it to him. His grandfather then took him to the lady's house, and when they got there, she didn't even know that the money was missing. A year later, when Tarbo was five, the owner of a local tavern confronted the family after Tarbo admitted to stealing a bottle of coins from the family's home. By the time Tarbo was 17 years old, he had already completed his first stint in prison. He was charged and convicted of house burglary and stealing from someone in the community. In 2004, he was released into the care of his mother, but his criminal tendencies continued to flourish. In 2005, just as social media was gaining momentum, Tarbo Bester embarked on a new career as a con man. Posing as an international scout, he approached aspiring models online and promised to send them for auditions and arrange brand collaborations, all for a fee to belong to his fake agency. However, it wasn't just money that he took from his victims. He would gain their trust, meet some of them in person, and then rob them of their possessions. His scheme was eventually uncovered in 2009 when he was charged with fraud and sentenced to three years in prison. What? Despite serving only two years, he was released on parole in 2011, ready what? to wreak havoc once again. What? Shortly after his release in 2011, Tarbo doubled down on his deceitful ways, taking his model agency scam to new heights. He continued with his scam of pretending to be an international scout, but now also forged paperwork to secure chartered planes, luxurious hotel rooms, and expensive camera equipment all while providing fake payment receipts. He'd then fly down aspiring models with promises of success, only to rob them of their possessions and sell the expensive camera equipment he acquired. He was eventually nabbed at the end of 2011 where he was charged for robbing and raping two women. Tarbo was then released on bond while the investigation continued. That same year, he also met an aspiring model and car saleswoman, Nomfundo Tihulu, who sold him a BMW. He once again posed as an international talent scout and quickly charmed his way into Numfundo's life. The two became close and eventually dated for a short while, before Bester stabbed her to death at a bed and breakfast in Cape Town. He was arrested in 2012 and found guilty of the murder of Numfundo Tihulu as well as the rape Yo, and robbery of the two women in 2011. This dude is violent, bruh. Like, this is not no, like, okay, this is not even, like, f not, nothing funny. This dude is violent, bruh. This is crazy right now. I'm mind blown right now, man. Rest in peace. God bless your soul. You know what I'm saying? Wow, this guy is violent, man. Eleven. Wow. He was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 25 years. Because for me, what's what's kind of striking is that I mean, you have the two rapes that occur to what do you say, a week or two apart, and the murder was how long after that? A week apart. It's as if all of a sudden something snapped. And the whole ball game has changed, where it was purely in the past, you know, financial conning, getting money, fraud, etc. It's as if it had gone into the next level. And. Well, one thing I also feel like 
I, I read the papers and I feel like they're talking about somebody else now. I look at these charges and I don't think it's you. Mm. That you're responsible for a death, but it not as a result of an intentional thing that you started out. I'm but responsible for a death, yes. More than, more, that's 100% correct. I'm not responsible for killing her. I did not kill her. If, 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 I'm sure if I wanted to kill her, I could have, I'm not a stupid person. I could have done it in a way that the cops wouldn't even know it was me. The rapes happened in a way that I did not know I was being raped until I left the premises. Because if I knew I was being raped, I could have covered myself up by using certain methods so that my fingerprints were not there and etc. So it only became known to me that I did rape when I left. So that's the way I feel about the whole incident. I'm sitting in a position where I feel I want this thing to pass as soon as possible. But I also as a human being want to be one day free mm. despite the fact that I feel guilty and yeah. I feel that I'm wrong sure. the courts were well aware of Tarbo Bester's dangerous nature so they deemed it necessary to send him to the Mangong Correctional Services a maximum security prison run by multinational private security firm G4S as part of a public-private partnership. G4S is Dubbed a big company. Dubbed upscale, well-run, and highly secure facility. G4, I think we, I think we got some G4S over here. That's a big company, like a big corporation or something like that. I'm pretty sure we got some G4S this side. But that's how you know, like, he's dealing with the big dogs now. Because G4S, like, that's an international corporation. I, I've seen it before. Prison run by multinational private security firm G4S. Yeah, multinational, as yeah. As part of a public-private partnership. Dubbed as an upscale, well-run, and highly secure facility, Mangong was the second largest private prison in the world. Whoa. This facility was supposed to be a place that even the most hardened of criminals would fear. But as you will find out later, the things that were allowed to happen here would make you sick to your core. But let's first start with the night of the inexplicable and suspicious fire. Fellow inmates at the prison said that Tarbo Bester was a moody inmate who always seemed to be in a somber mood. However, in the days leading up to the fire, he was unusually happy, telling inmates that he wouldn't be around much longer. They thought it was strange, but didn't pay too much attention to him. On May 2nd, 2022, without warning, Beaster was removed from his cell he shared with other inmates and told he was being placed in solitary confinement. The reason for his removal wasn't revealed, but it was said that Bester was kicking and screaming, putting up a show. At 3 a.m. on the morning of May 3rd, an official reported a mysterious smoke coming from the wing where Tarbo Bester was held. The police were only called at 4.25, nearly an hour and a half later. The call wasn't answered because they'd apparently had the wrong number on file, and officials then dialed 10 one South Africa's version of 911, at 5 a.m. that morning. Medical services at the institution declared Tarbo Bester dead at 5.10 a.m., and police arrived at 6.45 a.m. An initial investigation of the scene declared that Tarbo Bester committed suicide by setting his cell alight using a lighter he had with him, as prisoners who smoke was allowed to carry a lighter on them. The body was sent to the state pathologist who performed an autopsy on the body, as well as to conduct DNA tests. But this is where holes would start to appear. Initial reports from the pathologist where the doctor that comes the in? died of blunt force trauma to the head, and that there were no signs of smoke inhalation in the lungs. The report also stated that the pathologist noticed a strong odor of accelerant on the body. They could, however, not confirm if the body was indeed that of Tarbo Bester, because the country had a backlog of DNA tests, and it typically takes about four months for results to be returned. Back at the scene of the prison, authorities noticed that a number of CCTV cameras were tampered with, and that it wasn't pointing in the correct position. Additionally, at 2.59 a.m., literally seconds before the smoke was first reported, Almost at the edge of the frame on the CCTV footage, two people dressed in warden uniforms could be seen hastily exiting the prison. The footage could not determine who these people were. It was clear that the suspicion of Whoa. foul play was warranted, and officials were determined to uncover what had happened, and they were especially interested in the DNA results. But do they knock However, out? three days after the fire broke out, celebrity doctor and influencer Nandipa Magudumana approached the state mortuary. She informed them that she was the customary wife of Tarbo Bester and demanded that the body be handed over to her so that she could bury her husband. The mortuary was...
How did he? Nah, this is insane, bro. This is just. No, nah, I, I don't want to say too but much. The this is crazy. Then approached the courts, claiming that the dignity of her husband was being trampled on, as she wasn't allowed an opportunity to bury him. In court records, she <clears> claimed that she and Tarbo met at university, and that they rekindled their relationship. I thought in it was Tarbo, not Tarbo. And eventually got married in 2020, in line with customary law. This was a strange statement to make because court records reflected that Tarbo dropped out of school when he was 11 years old, and Nandipa was still officially married to her ex-husband even though she claimed to be divorced. Even though there was a lot of questions still up in the air, the body was eventually handed over to Nandipa, and she immediately took it to a crematorium where she intended to cremate it. But just before the body was due to be cremated, another spanner was thrown into the works. And Tarbo's mother came forward to claim the body for herself, saying that she wanted to bury her son. She said that she had no knowledge of Tarbo marrying Nandipa, and therefore she had no right to cremate her son. The courts then ruled that the body be returned to the state mortuary while the situation was being resolved. Despite the body having been returned to the morgue, Nandipa went on with her life and it was business as usual. As time passed and the news of Tarbo's death and subsequent investigation went quiet, it seemed that Nandipa and Tarbo became more comfortable, often being spotted together in public. That's also when the infamous photo was taken, putting the case firmly back into the spotlight. Like, After bro, the photo spread on social I'm not going to lie, that was not a smart move. Like, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm not saying I, I, I advocate for them, but I'm saying if you were like, you on the run, basically, right? You was not going to live free. Even if they think you dead, you was not going to live free. That was not a smart move. Like, first of all, she's like a celebrity influencer going out at a grocery store like you know there's uber eats you can do uber delivery where you can order things through uber and stuff like that you can just stay home i'm not saying i advocate for it i'm just saying that was just not smart many people recognized tarbo as the facebook rapist but there were also a number of other people who recognized him by some of his other aliases and the thing is too is the fact that she claimed that she's in a relationship with him right so if she's claiming that she's with a relationship with him and there's some dude that just looks just like him. Like, this guy got distinct features. Like, you can't even lie and say that's not him. Like, oh, it's her, his brother or something or his cousin or something? No, 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 no. And she's with some dude that looks just like him. Obviously, everyone's going to be like, yo, that, maybe that's him. Like, this is kind of interesting. Maybe that's him. One person recognized the man in the picture as Tom Matsup, the CEO of 21st Century Media Company. It turns out that while Tarbo was incarcerated, he ran a fake events and production company, which was made to look like a subsidiary of 21st Century Fox. He also claimed to be family of South Africa's richest man and mining magnate, Patrice Motsi. Oh my goodness. I would, if I was Patrice, I would hate that. Imagine, imagine, you know, saying you boss, you do your own thing, you make your own money, you got someone who's like, on the run type of criminal now claiming association with you and you work hard for your money. I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest, right? I would be really irritated, you know what I'm saying? But who knows? We'll get, let me let me let the video play. One person recognized the man in the picture as Tom Matsup, the CEO of 21st Century Media Company. Bro, this guy's living it like turns a movie, out that while though. Tarbo was incarcerated, he ran a fake events and production company, which was made to look like a subsidiary of 21st Century Fox. He also claimed to be family of South Africa's richest man and mining magnate, Patrice Motsip, in an attempt to make himself look more credible. The company even had a glitzy launch at the Hilton Hotel in Santon in 2018. Whoa. And the event was attended by various celebrities and members of Damn. Johannesburg's high society. The event took place on June 13th, the day of Tarbo's birthday, and attendees were told that the chairman of the company, Mr. Tom Matsupi couldn't attend because he was on a business trip, but would video call in from New York. Unbeknown to the audience, the man appearing on the big screen in front of them was actually the convicted rapist what and does that not Tarbo Bester. Calling Bro, him. this is like, you know the movie Lupin, uh, the Netflix show Lupin, Lupin, where the guy's like, you know what I'm saying, the, the black guy, he's like at least 6'7" right and he puts a mustache on they're looking for him he's escaping i think i don't know what he was escaping i can't remember he's escaping police he's escaping the, the cops in prison and all that right so he's running around paris running around paris he's a tall six seven dark skinned black man you know what i'm saying and the whole setting everyone is white like everyone is white right that in the areas he's in everyone is white and literally he's running around running around running around 
But he puts some fake mustache on, all of a sudden it's a different person. Then when he takes it off, they recognize him. Like that's what this is giving right now. Because you're telling me you're telling me you could not reckon like this guy looks familiar. Like, you know what I'm saying? Even the quote unquote police are like in the setting, like they'd be like, Yo, this guy looks familiar. I don't know, like I'm just I'm just saying, like, it's giving Netflix movie right now. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's giving Netflix right now. That the chairman of the company, Mr. Tom Matsupi, couldn't attend because he was on a business trip, but would video call in from New York. Unbeknown to the audience, the man appearing on the big screen in front of them was actually the convicted rapist and murderer Tarbo Bester, calling in from prison. Tarbo, who was dressed in a snazzy suit, which was definitely not prison attire, had the entire audience sing happy birthday to him. No, 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 no. This is a crazy story. The fact that, the fact that it's on video, like, this is on video, y'all. It's on video. Oh, my goodness. Hope you're not crying. Like, it's a video chat. It's a video chat. Former employees at the company said that they had no idea that Tom Motsip was actually Tarbo Bester, and they confirmed that he was pretty much hands-on with the company and would transfer funds whenever they needed. They but said that Tom, who they thought was based in New York, would often meet with them via video conference discussing strategy for the business. They never What I'm confused about is how this man literally how this man literally like the hell is that a Photoshop picture? But I, I bro there's something about dude bro. It's like it's like he's not real. Like that's what I'm saying. It's like it's not, he's not real, bro. Like, he, Tarbo Bester. I don't know how his real face looks like because every picture is a different face, bro. And would transfer funds whenever Holy they needed. Holy smoke, this is creepy, they said that man. Tom, who Spooky. they thought was based in New York, would often meet with them via video conference discussing strategy for the business. They never believed that anything was wrong, as Tom even had a Twitter profile where he would Photoshop pictures to make it seem like he was doing ordinary things. He was even able to convince employees from other media companies to quit their jobs and join his company instead, believing they were about to work at an industry-leading company associated Bro, he's faking it till he's making it, man. Fox. Or he was... It's crazy to think that Tarbo Bester was able to run an entire company while behind bars, and it would be naive to believe that the guards had no knowledge about what was going on. After his escape from prison, it's believed that Tarbo then assumed the name TK Inquana, and that he then ran a million-dollar scam construction company with celebrity doctor... Nandipa Magudumana. It's alleged that the Yo. couple convinced several people to pay millions for construction projects, but never delivered the goods. The company was called Aram Properties and registered in the that's name where of they Nandipa got them. Magudumana. I feel like that's where they got them. You play people's money now. People are going to start investigating now. I think that's what happened. You know what I'm saying? You play people's money. You say, hey, hey, hey. You, I got a construction company. I need this much money, but you don't deliver. That's when you like, especially investors. When you mess with the investors, those are the real big dogs of the world. The investors, you know what I'm saying? Investors are the ones that control the world type vibes. And shareholders and investors and the CEOs, you play with their money, oh, they're coming after you. And they're going to make sure, they're going to make sure you pay every damn cent, dollar, rands, rupees, whatever it is. They're going to make sure you pay everything back. That's where they messed up now. Many of the victims confirmed that they were introduced to TK by Dr. Magudumana and said that he took care of the day-to-day -day operations of the business while Magudumana attended to work at her practice. It has also since been revealed that someone from the official Aram Properties Instagram account had been reaching out to influencers and models, inviting them to audition for a Netflix show called Hot Property Chick. Luckily, it doesn't seem that any of the ladies agreed to the invite. Although at least one person agreed to a Zoom meeting to ensure that it was legit. Screenshots from the Zoom meeting shows the profile picture of the initiator seemed to resemble Tarbo Bester. During the Zoom call, the lady was invited to Cape Town, where she was due to audition for the Netflix show. Her gut feeling, however, told her that something wasn't right, and she ended up canceling at the last minute. Whoa, that's your ancestors. After the pictures of Tarbo leaked online, Dr. Nandipa Mangudumana abandoned her practice as well as the mansion she was renting with an unknown man. Video footage from a private investigator was recently put online where Dr. Mangudumana was approached by a private investigator who was hired by accreditors to track her down. What it's did I tell you? 
Did you just see that hired by a creditor? What did I tell you guys? It's the easy. <laughs> I'm trying to tell y'all. This is the law of life. Like I'm trying to put y'all on so much game right now. When you when you like you get someone to invest money invest money into you, right? Like I'm talking about big people because you're talking about you have a construction company. I'm pretty sure he was dealing with real, real big dogs. You know what I'm saying? Real, real big dogs, right? And this guy's also splitting personalities. I feel like he's playing on this property guy and then he's playing on Mozepe type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Faking the vibe, right? But anyways, when you touch these guys' money, bro, I'm talking big money, not no hundred thousand. No, I'm I'm pretty sure they invest at least like twenty million dollars, which is like I don't know how much that is in rands, but like twenty million dollars, hundred million dollars into his company, the construction company, because to build things is not cheap. Metal is not cheap. Concrete is not cheap. You know what I'm saying? Paying wages is not cheap. So. When you mess with these guys' money, they're going to hunt you down. Investors will hunt you down. That's the way of capitalism. Like, that's the way it works in our societies, man. But this is just insane right here. Like, this guy's, it's like, it's like a movie, bro. It's like, he's like split, you know? Changing up. He's changing up who he is. Duh, duh, duh. But now, this is interesting. You see that they, they have video footage of, of her, you know what I'm saying? So, See how it is. You can't. You you, you got to be watching your every move because you don't know who be watching you at the end of the day, bro. You, you don't realize who be watching you. This world is so big. You can't see every single angle, bro. You can only see this way, but you can't see it this way. You can't see this way. You can only see this way. You know what I'm saying? Holy Amanda smokes. Kumana abandoned her practice as well as the mansion she was renting with an unknown man. Video footage from a private investigator was recently put online where Dr. Mangudumana was approached by a private investigator who was hired by accreditors to track her down. Hired by It's creditors. believed that she had driven her leased vehicle to the neighboring country of Zimbabwe and that she abandoned the vehicle there, no, oh, despite Zimbabwe? still owing approximately $40,000 on the car. The video is believed to relate to an incident in 2022, around the same time as when Tarbo escaped from prison. Bro, so he was just playing with money, man. Wow. This is insane. He has her in 4K. Yeah. Wow. And who would have known, man? Talk to you, Hi. How are you, Masu? How are you? Can you sit? Yeah, you can sit down. Hi, man. I don't know if you don't discuss this in front of your colleague. It's a um, personal matter with Carbon Blackwater, where you took the car the border to Zimbabwe. Um, you still outstanding 700,000 and there's a case open against you. There's a document against you. So we just want to try and sort this out amicably. We... You can in front of Okay. Can we kill you? Okay, man. Uh, you borrowed a car from Carbon Black, is that right? And then you said you want to purchase a vehicle. You sign this letter. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, sure. Okay, you started paying and you stopped paying. And the car is outside across the border in Zimbabwe, the face, the fourth number face. No. The car is still standing at the border. We've checked the car to the border. We're busy too. So, so on the chair. Uh, Bro, this is real life? You want to know what's happening with it? There's outstanding vans. As of today, April 7th, 2023, Tarbo Bester is still on the run and has not been tracked down since. The whereabouts of Nadifa Mangudamana is yet to be determined, and police is looking for her as a person of interest. G4S, the security company who ran the Mangong prison, maintains that the body found in cell 35 was that of Tarbo Bester. They continue to deny that they knew anything about Tarbo's business dealings in prison, and maintained that he only had access to a laptop because he was in the process of completing his studies in prison. The government contract with G4S has since been canceled. Whoa, and that's the end of the video, man. This guy is still on the run, you know what I'm saying? This is the craziest thing I don't react. This is the craziest thing I've reacted to on my channel. Like, this is like, wow. Like, oh my goodness, wow. This is spooky. Oh my goodness, wow. Wow, 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 wow. I'm not going to lie. This is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, my thoughts. I don't have too much thoughts. The video kind of explained everything. You know what I'm saying? I kind of said what I had to say. 
all I'm finna say is, I'm not saying I av- I'm not saying I advocate for it, but there's a lot of dumb things they did, you know what I'm saying, which got them caught. First of all, why would you go to a grocery store like that with your celebrity? And then, ugh, someone's supposed to be dead and you're gonna be, that's like, you know, I'm not gonna say too much, man. This is just creepy and I don't even wanna speak on this too much, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you like it, comment, share, subscribe if you're new to the channel, one way to 100K, man. Send me some more things to react to, but this was real spooky. I'm not gonna lie to you, man. And this is like a Netflix movie or something, like, it is literally like a. In fact, I'm pretty sure they're gonna make a Netflix film out of this. I just know it. I can see it in the. I, I can see it's probably in the works right now. I know a pre- company producer, or whatever, a director is just writing down the script. He's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I can see it happening right now. I can see it. But anyways, y'all, if you made this far, I appreciate it. One way to hundred k. Let's get it popping, y'all.